Jot down on top of that paper least common multiple. That would be helpful. You actually did a problem today that dealt with least common multiple. The book or I myself, rather than writing those, Joseph, Joseph, what's going on? Why don't you, Joseph, will you, you got, I follow a rule, the rule of separation that says if there is possible to be a chair of separation, you need to have a chair of separation. Everybody needs their space, right, Ryan? Mean, everybody. You have to actually come on all the way down here and slide all the way down. not sit together in the Perfect. Anyways, the book and I will also refer to that. Rather than writing out those long three words there, if you see the letters L C M, that means you're looking for that least common multiple. If you see that, that's what it is. And here is, once you see kind of the example, I think that will make sense to you. <clears throat> Find the least common multiple of 6 and 10. Find the least common multiple of 6 and 10. First thing to find the least common multiple you need to do is you need to list the multiples of both, both numbers. Or sometimes they'll ask you for three, but for right now we're just going to do both. The problem with that would be if I asked you to list all the multiples of six, Zach Roth, list me all the multiples of six. Six, well, well, you stopped at 66, about 72 or 78 or 84 or 90. Yeah, the problem with listing all the multiples is you can't because multiples go on forever. So you have to list, you just kind of have to list a reasonable amount just to kind of get you going there. So multiples of 6 would be like Zach said, 6, 12, 18, 24, 30. And they keep going, and you might have to add some more later if you don't come up with one here. Multiples of 10 should be pretty easy for you, right? They are 10, 20, 30, 40, 40 and they go on forever. And you can show that going on forever with these little, little dots there. That's step number one. Step number two is to circle, well, the common multiples. Circle common multiples. And the nice thing about this one is we only have one. I probably should have done a different problem. But what multiples do they have in common here, Riley? Which one do you see both of them have? There's only one. What number shows up in both? What's that? 30. And since it said you want the least common multiple, you would take the smallest one they have. And in this case, we only got to one. By the way, guess how many common, guess how many common multiples 6 and 10 have? More than just one. Because you can go to 60. 60 is a multiple of 6 and 10. You know how many multiples two numbers, those two numbers have? What'd you say? Yes. It never ends. You can go on forever. It has a never ending amount of common multiples. That's why we always want to go with the smallest one, because otherwise, if I asked you to give the biggest common multiple that, could you do it? You couldn't, because I could always give you a bigger one. Let's look at another one. That one was probably not the best example to start with. 
Uh, how about 2 and 3? The least common multiple of 2 and 3. On your paper, on your homework, you don't have to write down this, but I do need you to show me the multiples of 2 and the multiples of 3. And you can really stop when you get to one that's a common multiple. Multiples of 2 are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, whatever. Multiples of 3 are 3, 6, 9, 12. And here you can see this is a common multiple, this is a common multiple, but which one do I want? Which one do I want? Which one do I want? Yeah, the smallest one, the least common multiple. Do they know why we want to know common multiples? What will this come in handy? Does anybody know? Anybody? Anybody know what this comes in handy like? Wow. Nice job. How did you know that, lady? Natural intelligence? How about least common multiple of 3 and 5? Multiples of 3 are 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. Multiples of 5, 5, 10, 15, 20. Really, you can stop when you get to that first one that they have in common. The least common multiple of 3 and 5 would be do they ask us any harder questions? Oh, yeah, here's one. Layton must have been looking at today's assignment. Were you, Layton? Are you sure? Write down this problem. The denominators of 5 eighths and 3 tenths. This, is, this comes right out of the book, so don't blame me. The denominators of 5 eighths and 6 tenths. I think I got that right here. How about 3 tenths? And 3 tenths are 8 and 10. What is the least common multiple of 8 and 10? If you have 8 and 10, what's the smallest common multiple they have? Counting by 8s would be 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. Counting by 10s, 10, 20, 30, 40. Smallest one, Zach, you said they had is 40. And the reason why they tell you that, because if you were to add these two fractions together, if you have 5 eighths and 3 tenths, you can't just add them together like that, right? Because fractions have to have the same bottom numbers to add up together. So they tell you that because those are the numbers. 40 would be the number you'd have to change the bottom to to add them together. What fraction would this change to? 3 tenths is how many 40 is? Can't see me this? What's that? Four. Well, I multiply by 4. What is 3 times 4? Yeah. 3 tenths is 12 fortieths. 5 eighths is how many fortieths? 40. Joseph? Five. Well, you multiply by 5. You multiply 5 by 5, it's 1 5 fortieths. Now you can add those two fractions together because you can add 25 fortieths and 12 fortieths together. What is that? Grace? 25 and 12 is? Yes, 37. Well done. But they won't ask you to do too much of that. Oh, look at the time, children. No, we will not do the odds. We'll do the even. One twelve. Let's do the even numbers.
Thank you.